Hello. Today, I have a special guest. It is a leading expert in hair diseases, Professor Ulrike Blume Petafi from Berlin, Charité. Thank you for being here with me. Hello, Professor Ulrike. Nice Thank to be with you. Thank you very much. You gave a great lecture yesterday afternoon about the hair loss related to androgenic alopecia mm -hmm. and about topical and systemic treatments. What are the topical treatments for androgenic alopecia that you use most commonly? And do you use the same or similar in men and in women? Thank you for the question. That's very important for counseling. I think in topical treatments for androgenic alopecia in men, we have two options. It's topical minoxidil solution of foam, be twice daily, and topical finasteride. In women, it's mostly topical minoxidil and, of course, other adjunct therapies, but without less efficacy. So uh, let's concentrate for a moment on uh, topical minoxidil. Mm -hmm. For minoxidil, there, there's either the solution or the foam. Mm -hmm. Which one do you prefer? So it depends. Men quote often, I explain it to the patient. Mm -hmm. And then I explain the advantage and disadvantage of each. And most of the men, they pray, prefer to have the spray. Because Can you tell us about the advantages and disadvantage of foam and solution? Yeah. Uh, the spray is you have an applicator, they just put it below their hair and spray it. It's easy, it's quick, and that's what men prefer. However, men, with, when they prefer to use foam, foam is thermosensitive. So, in fact, I explained them exactly. You go under the water that your fingers are cold. Then you spray a little half of the cup uh, on a little uh, plate and then you use two fingers to apply it to the scalp. When you have more uh, space on the scalp to apply it, foam, I like it very much from the application. It has less irritancy from my experiences and uh, men also like it. Some like it also because it has a bit of styling, because it's good for the hair also. So it's more to the preference and the patients try to it. So if someone has irritation from the spray, mm -hmm. then you would switch to a foam. Exactly. But most of the men, they start with spray for easiness uh, and um, then they switch to the foam. If there's irritation or some, when it's a more greater area where it's free, they start directly with the foam twice daily. And regarding the efficacy, you think that the efficacy is similar of the spray and the foam if it's, bo foam, if it's both 5%? Yes, there's the no difference. From my experience, mm -hmm. there's no difference. Uh, it's more the way how you apply it, whether you do enough quantity uh, as uh, recommended. But the, um, there's no advantage of penetration, I mean, or something like this. Studies and personal experience also from my patient and from myself, there's no difference. I always tell my patients they should not rub the minoxidil or whatever they're using into the scalp because they can destroy the hair. Do you think uh, rubbing is of benefit or rather you do not recommend rubbing? It's nice that you recommend it like this. I tell them always to put their fingers on the head, not to rub it like this, but to massage in a uh -huh. way their scalp because then, because I also explain them when you apply topical minoxidil, it penetrates and there's below the skin surface, there is a fine network of vessels. So in fact, the effect is that it penetrates, goes to the nasal network and therefore massaging can improve. Uh, because they always want the penetration, the penetration, mm -hmm. and they want to touch their scalp. It's not by spraying, just leaving it on it, because you cannot reach every area. But I like to distribute it very uh, mild, mildly, mild, mildly, and put the fingers, press them, and then massage in a way at moving the scalp. But without rubbing. Without rubbing. Rubbing you, you. If you have fragile hair, you you damage the cuticula because the keratin fiber is not liking to have rubbing. So let's switch now to topical finasteride. Mm -hmm. Please tell us about topical finasteride. Topical finasteride, I think it's a good option for men because of course you have lower amount of finasteride levels in the blood. You have 
50% erupt about and in fact it penetrates well you apply it with an applicator you because it's a low quantity it's 50 microliter so it's a spray like aerosol which then where you put i always tell them put it in your trianguli and if you have very um, large area here you can put two two times here and here with the applicator and just one spray mm -hmm. and so i think this is a good option for men with genetic alopecia First, for young men, because they don't want really, they are a bit afraid of starting oral treatment. Uh, and then also others or older men also who do not want to start mm -hmm. oral treatment. And I think the disadvantage of oral treatment has always been a loss of libido. Um, um, and this is in some patients. Yes, this is very interesting because we know that finasteride is penetrating from the scalp to the blood flow but still there is a lower number of adverse events mm -hmm. for some reasons. We all know that some of the adverse events of the oral finasteride, they may be like the nocebo effect. So uh, I think that maybe there's a psychological of background, course. but definitely has been shown that the topical finasteride has less of these effects despite very high penetration in general. It has a high penetration, but it's still only 50% uh, in the serum level compared to oral. And also uh, the DHT level, which is lowered, is less lowered. So personally, in my experience, uh, this I haven't seen any of these described mm -hmm. side effects or reported side effects in oral finasteride. But to be honest, I've rarely seen in oral finasteride also these side effects. However, when you do look uh, to the clinical study with topical finasteride, you can observe that in fact um, the irritant contact dermatitis, because it has also propylene glycol, but because it has some may have some irritating factors, they were lower in the clinical study than with a placebo. Uh, and with minoxidil. So in fact, if you, op you may observe in patients who are prone to, the, to irritant dermatitis, who are dry skin, in atopic dermatitis, you may see it, but it's quite low. We may also add that in some countries where this uh, finasteride is approved, it comes with a, a quite funny way of application. And this is to prevent the spread of the finasteride to the surrounding area, especially because of the adverse effect in pregnant women, because it has a teratogenic effect. So some of our patients are wondering why this strange mm -hmm. type of applicator. Yeah, but this applicator is quite good. Therefore, you use only a low amount because you concentrate on the area. And just to add, a topical finasteride has been approved by the European Medical agency but it's so it's approved in Europe but it has only made available in some European country so it's interesting I think uh, and it's an option in our armentarium how to treat under genetic alopecia. I know that some of our colleagues in other countries they are using the compound finasteride which mm -hmm. is also possible and uh, one maybe last question for today do you ever combine topical finasteride with topical minoxidil and if so how do you do it? Thank you for this question because I think counseling and uh, our patient and having satisfied patient is the main goal and most often you know, in all cases I combine mm -hmm. because they have two different working mechanisms and my patients who like to have a treatment they want to grow their hair, I offer them the broad spectrum. So combination of topical finasteride once a day because it's uh, only once a day. So in the evening, for example, and topical minoxidil is morning and evening. So it's recommended to have it spared, the two applications uh, for at least four hours to have better penetration of both trucks. So it depends, I explain it, so when you come in the morning you use it when you brush your teeth, mm -hmm. in the afternoon you use it when you come home from work and then before going to bed you can do the third application. So you have mm -hmm. enough space in between. Any preference what to do first, minoxidil or finasteride? 
Uh, I always prefer to do finasteride prior to minoxidil mm -hmm. because then you have a better distribution if, of remaining drug in the vessels or in the tissue. And so, but it's to the ease of the patient. It was a pleasure having you here and thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.